Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys the yearly update on my willow plants here. So with these willows what we do is a two year rotation where we pollard them down and we just cut them every other year. That way we get lots of nice tall shoots that we can use for support in our garden. We can also use it for firewood as well. And it just keeps them under control, stops them getting too large and too big. So these willows, as I say, they've been getting established the last few years. Every year they seem to be growing bigger and better. And we've had massive amounts of growth. I think four meters 70 is, is the most it's grown in one season. These are hybrid willows, so they grow incredibly fast once they're pollarded. Uh, as an example of how much they've grown, you can see this archway here that we've made, this willow archway. That was cut down to the, the t that level there this time last year and you can see how much it's grown it's probably about four or five meters in height and i'll definitely be measuring that seeing how much height we've got this year with the with the growth so i'll tell you how the willows have grown this year so the last year it was a, quite a dry summer and so the willow hasn't done quite as well as it has previously so it's kind of hard to sow but basically in the previous years when we cut it back the, the new growth in one year grew almost to the height as the two year growth but this year the new growth is definitely quite a bit lower than the, the growth that we had the year before. It has grown well, there is, it is probably two or three meters of growth but the year before it was more like three or four meters of growth. And we've had a few more shoots so it could partly be because we've got more shoots. Instead of putting all the energy into two or three shoots, each plant has got about ten shoots so that might be part of it. So what I might do is in spring the stuff that's just been pollarded down when it sprouts back just reduce the number of shoots down a bit so we get some thicker canes that are a greater length instead of having all these really thin ones because they're not quite as useful but it has grown well as I say um, but the, the dry summer I think it's just stunted it a bit that combined with having too many shoots on each pollard it's just meant that they're not quite as tall this year but it's still looking quite good which you can see the height of the, the ones from the previous year are the ones that have branches on them and they are really are quite a tall plant so I'll take you in now and show you the actual pollarded stems and, and where we do the pollarding. So the reason I've gone for pollarding is if I did the coppice, which is when you cut it at the ground level, you have to bend down, it's a bit more difficult to, to cut things at ground level. So I've just gone to about a metre in height, that way it's a really nice easy height and manage, it's nice and manageable. Any higher, you're, you're kind of reaching up and it's a bit more difficult. Any lower and you're kind of bending your back. So this metre height is perfect for cutting them back, just makes it easier to maintain. And what we do, it's every second year we just cut this back to the main point and then it resprouts lots of shoots. So this is, for example, a two-year shoot. There's multiple branches coming up. I probably should have thinned this down to maybe just a few, but there's, there's still quite a lot on there. This is a one-year pollard. As you can see, the branches are, tend to be paler and they're just long, thin branches as opposed to these thicker ones. And then again, we go over here. I alternate them as well. So this is a one-year, that's two-year pollard, one year. So what are we doing this year? And so we're going and getting these two year pollards, cutting them down to that base, leaving the one year pollards there to grow up a bit more. So they'll have that two years of growth. So the reason we like to leave it for two years is we just get slightly thicker branches, a bit more useful. So we used to do it on a yearly basis, but the problem we were having is it's a very windy garden here. And the main purpose of this willow is actually as a windbreak. So we get very strong westerly winds and this really just helps to buffer those winds. But because we were doing it yearly, what it meant is that most of the, of the spring and early summer, we weren't really getting any shelter at all because the willows were very low down. We started doing this two year rotation now. That way, half of them are still up at the full height so we get that shelter and so we got a bit of shelter the year round whereas before it was really just the end of the year that we get the shelter so that's why it's a another reason why it's a two-year um, pollard and as you can see from the photos once it's grown up it is quite a big green wall now a couple of things that are different this year is we got this windbreak the wind was still blowing through here quite strong and although it wasn't strong enough to damage the plants too much this is a little seating area that we have we tend to sit in the garden on, on, on a summer's day in this location as it's a bit more sheltered than, than most areas but the wind was still just blowing through a bit too much so we put up a windbreak it does need to be strengthened because that middle pole is leaning but we got that windbreak there so i need to take out a lot of this willow that's grown up underneath it so all of this all of these thin sticks either need to be pulled out or cut out of that but that's definitely helped what we'll probably do eventually is i'll put some climbers up there so that the windbreak kind of disappears into the background you don't see this big green barrier the green that you will see is just probably from an evergreen climber i might do something like a passion flower because it's quite mild here as this garden's near the coast so passion flowers should survive the winters i might do something like that but that's going to be a probably a, a, a little while in the future before i do that and i'll, I'll also show you the archways and they're thickening up quite nicely we've got this one here which is the oldest one, quite a narrow one. It's quite a tightly uh, wound one as well. And then we've got the other archway at the end, which is a much, much wider one. This is about a year younger. 
than the previous archway and the way I've done this one is it's kind of loose at this end and then it goes tight to the right hand side and uh, with this archway as well with the other one we just cut it right back to the main structure and when it comes to pruning these what we have to do throughout the summer is we have to selectively prune some of these branches out because what happens is the the sap flows up from the, the roots it contains hormones which encourage the bur bursting of the buds and they will always grow strongest the branches at the highest point so what will happen is the branches here for example will grow here and then you'll have a lot of growth going off the side and then the rest of the branch which is around around won't thicken up anymore so you can see this on some of these branches here where the branch comes off the, the branch further along is thinner so instead of the, the growth being here you want the growth to be all at the end of the branch that way this whole central part thickens up and we've been doing this one with this one for a while and it's starting to look quite thick now it was quite thin the problem we were having is they were really thick at the edges but it wasn't thick in the middle because the, the growth as i say was confined to that side and as i say this one was a year older this this other arch and you can see even better with this one because we didn't actually do that special pruning until a bit later on so you can see here you've got this really thick stem coming up and then a load of branches come off and then the whole stem you can see it suddenly thins to really quite a thin stem there and then another shoot comes off and then it thins again so what we really should have done is these big shoots coming up here in summertime we should have taken them off and allowed it to sprout more on this side just to get that more even spread it, it was more severe than this but we've done a bit more selective pruning the last couple of years and it's getting a nice thick structure now and it is really solid very nice and strong so even with all the growth above it with strong winds it still stays nice and steady and it doesn't come apart also because I've wound these branches all together they're kind of self grafting now and so this is absolutely solid there's not really any give in, the, in any of these branches so what I was doing at the beginning with these um, these archways is I was tying in new branches every year but now that they're so well established all I really need to do is just cut all the branches off and I don't really need to tie any branches in unless there's an area that looks particularly thin but most of this is quite a nice even coverage now of willow I will have a look as I'm tie as I'm, I'm pruning it to see if anywhere could be tied in but generally most of these archways now are nice and tightly bound together and we don't really have anywhere that needs thickening up so I'll go ahead now I'll set up my time-lapse camera and I'll start trimming all the willow and you'll see see the difference it won't be too dramatic because I'm just pollarding every other willow to make sure we do have some protection and uh, the biggest differences will be definitely on the archways because they get pollarded every year and I'll try and measure up see how much it's grown as I say last summer was particularly dry willow likes a lot of water so the dry weather really stunts its growth so I'm not expecting um, record-breaking height I think as I say 4 meters 70 was the most we've had in one season I reckon it'll be like 4 meters 50 or maybe 4 meters will be the max this year but we'll see once I cut them down I'll measure them and see how much growth there is So I've just been chopping off the shoots from this archway here and this is the one that always grows the fastest and tallest. I'd like to show you the, the longest shoot we have this year. So this is it here, nice long single stem. Now I thought it might be quite a lot shorter this year because it was a dry summer and most of the other willows haven't grown as well as they have in previous years. But this one's actually not too bad. It's actually 4 meters 30 so I think the, the record, I'll put it up if I can't remember it correctly, it was like 4 meters 70 or something like that. This is at 4 meters 30 so that's really quite good. And as you can see, the, the top has actually snapped off. So this is probably maybe another 10 centimeters, maybe four meters 40 before that top snapped off. I don't think it's lying on the ground here. I think it's probably snapped off by some strong winds in the autumn time. 
so I don't know what the, the full height of this was, but it was definitely at least 10 centimeters, maybe a bit more. So it wouldn't have been record breaking for this garden, but four meters 30 is still very good considering the dry summer we had. So it'll be interesting to see what it does this year. I think we can definitely achieve five or six meters if we have perfect weather one year where it's really wet summer and that's what the willows really want for really good strong growth is lots and lots of rain all the time because they are water loving plants. We live in a very sandy area so although the water table is quite high here in the winter the water table completely disappears just about it really sinks down quite fast in the summer and because it's so sandy that the soil just doesn't hold much moisture so it is quite a dry garden this one so we'll see what happens next year but anyway four meters 30 quite happy with that pretty good growth for just one season and the season is quite short here being in north scotland so these start growing i think it's around march or april time i'll put on some pictures and also some dates as to when those pictures are taken so you have an idea of when the growth season starts and it normally finishes kind of about middle of september that's when the stock, the growth really slows down. It might put on a tiny bit of growth end of September, early October, but the rapid growth is mainly between May and August time. So that's all the willow now cut. As you can see, there's quite a big difference this year. I think the problem is because it hasn't put as much growth on this year, there's not as much to fill in as there was in previous years, especially in this side here. I think the reason for this is along this side, there's lots of vegetable plots on the other, just not far from the, the willow. And I think a lot of the nutrition from the compost and the fertilizer we put on that that leaches through to the willow and that willow always does really well. This willow doesn't do quite as well each year. Also something keeps nibbling off the shoots on this side so you can see it's a lot shorter. Hopefully we'll get a bit more height this year but we'll just see how that does. But the amount of material I've taken off is definitely the most I've ever taken off the willow. So we've got a small selection down here, we've got some little sticks over there, we've got quite a large selection of, of sticks here. You can see we've got some nice catkins as well so we can always take this inside. Catkins will develop further and get much bigger once they warm up and they're always quite nice for flower arranging. And then coming round, as I say there's the small ones here, a few more smaller ones here and then quite a lot came off of the archway. So the archway here for example was all these sticks and all of these branches as well and then I've also got some branches on the ground down here and then I've got this massive pile here as well so I think we've got two or three times as much material this year as we do normally I think that's because the year before it grew really well and it, we really got some big shoots coming up and uh, so we've got a lot of material this year so it's looking pretty good but I'll take you now to the archways so the archways didn't need too much work you can see this one here I, I wrapped in a couple of new branches but this one was generally quite okay so didn't need too much work Quite a few branches take off but it's not a very wide archway so there wasn't too much because this is a narrower archway the branches tend to grow taller and they're slightly less, less numerous this archway however is quite different it's a lot wider so there tends to be a lot more branches but they're not quite as big and this one i'm training in a slightly different way so i did actually train in probably about five or six new branches now i'm going to try and keep this appearance more so what i might do is some of these ones up here which are kind of sticking out a bit loose i might trim them off in the future and try and get that even tighter on that side and maybe even get some more from further away, get this even looser, make it more of an interesting looking archway. So as I say, that's it all pretty much done, much more clearer. So we might get a bit more wind damage this year with being less branches, but we'll see how it does. And there's just a couple of things to note that I, I needed to do this year differently, is I had to thin out some of the ones that, that weren't for pruning. So you can see this one, for example, is one that didn't need prune this year but it has loads of branches, so I've actually taken out quite a few here of the smaller ones. Now the issue we're having here is when you prune any plant, but particularly a plant that responds very vigorously with lots of new growth when it's pruned hard, you get much more branches year after year. It's a bit like the old uh, ancient Greek myth of the Hydra. So basically, whenever you cut off a branch, two or three branches will then come up from that point. And then every time you cut that next branch, then you get even more two or three branches. So the first time we cut these is probably only two or three branches per plant and then we had two or three stumps they all grew two or three branches giving maybe like nine branches and then we had those nine branches cut off so now they're starting to get up you can see some of them here they've probably got more like 15 branches on them so we're going to have to watch out for that especially one of these some of these ones that i've cut this year you can see there's lots of branches all over 
what I really need to do is come springtime, reduce all the new suits down to probably about three or four main suits. That way we'll just get some really big, nice, long, thick, strong branches that we can use. Whereas all these little tiny thin branches, they're not really useful for us. We just shred them, use them as mulch. The thicker branches I can use it for plant support and the extra thick ones we can burn in the fire as well. So that's what I'll be doing going forward. I'll be making sure that new suits that come up are, are, are just reduced down to just two or three suits come springtime when it re-sprouts and that way we'll get some nicer thicker canes and we should also try and get some more height as well because one of the problems we're getting at the moment I, it does, I can't really sew it as much now because I've pruned it back but there's quite a lot of overhang with these branches and the reason for that is because there's so many they're kind of pulling apart trying to separate to give each other more space if we just had two or three in each plant they would go much more straight and they wouldn't hang over as much and it's causing a bit of a shade issue it's not a problem here with the raspberries but on this side it has been a bit of a problem with things you can just see where my shadow is there the rosemary and the broom they light a lot of light it doesn't look too bad now because I did actually take off some of the worst branches but this is overhanging, shading them in summer, it's just not ideal. So if I reduce it down to two or three branches, they'll be much more upright and they won't overhang as much. That'll really help with shading out the plants a little bit less. So that's all for this willow update. As I say, the most uh, we've ever taken off of the willow. But going forward, I think next year will be a bit of a smaller harvest because you can see it's definitely not as tall and also some of the other suits as well are almost non-existent there, they're very very short so we'll see what happens and I'll see you guys next year when I do another update unless I do a little bit of remedial work in the summertime.